So far we've made great progress. We've learned about factory functions, we've learned about wrapper and mount, we've also learned about the data and props mounting options. Our tests are very static though, we haven't got any interaction. I'm going to show you how you can interact with your components, for example by clicking on a button. The first improvement I'm going to make is adding a button to this template, and that's going to let us increment count by clicking on the button. So we're going to create a new button with a click listener, and this is going to call a method called increment. Let's go ahead and create that method now. I'm going to call this one increment and it's just going to increase count by one so we're just going to say plus equals to one. Let's save this off and make sure our tests are all still passing and so they are. The next thing we're going to do is change this test. Instead of setting data to be one by default, we're going to let it be zero and then we're going to increment it by clicking on the button. If we save this off, we're actually going to get an error now and that's because we're trying to destructure an object which we're not passing in. What I'm going to do is pass a default object here. It's going to have data which is an empty object by default. Let's save this one off now. And we can see we now get, got rid of that error, but our test is now failing. It's expecting one, but it's actually getting zero, which is exactly the failure we would expect here. Let's go ahead now and see how you can click on that button. The first thing I'm going to do is call wrapper.trigger, and this is going to trigger an event. I'm going to pass in click, and this is actually not going to work. We have to say where we'd like to trigger the event. If I save this off, we're just going to see it not working. The reason for this is if we call trigger on the wrapper, it's going to trigger it not on the specific component or the specific element. We need to search for the element we'd like. In this case, it's going to be button. Let's go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do is show you another method called find, and we're going to find the button by just passing this in here. Now we're going to call trigger on the button and call the click event. Let's save it off and see what happens. This is actually still going to fail, which is a little bit surprising. Let me quickly explain what's going on here using this diagram. So you can imagine view is going to update in frames. You might say in the very first frame that data is currently one and we're incrementing it here. What's going to happen is we're not actually going to update until the next frame, for example, frame two. And what's happening here is we're running our assertion down here in frame one. What we need to do is make sure we await for frame two and that's going to ensure that the DOM has been updated correctly. There's a really good way to do this and I'm going to show you that now. View basically has this function called await next tick and this is going to await for the next frame. So what we can do is put this in between the two frames and that's actually going to let us await for the update before we run our assertion. Let's go ahead and try that. The first thing I'm going to do is jump up to the top of my file and I'm going to import next tick and that one is going to come from view. Let's go ahead and import that and now we're going to jump down to our function and we're going to mark this as asynchronous so we can use the await keyword. I'm now going to say await next tick and this is going to force this to wait for the next frame and then we're hopefully going to see the correct assertion run. Let's go ahead and save this off and see what happens. And sure enough, everything is now passing. By calling next tick here, it's going to wait for the update. And by the time it's updated, we're then going to run this assertion and make sure the DOM is correct. 